Hello everyone, my name is Chris Nguyen, I'm the Director of MRI at HVTI. Hello, and I'm Debbie Kwan. Um, I'm the Director of Cardiac MRI here at the Cleveland Clinic. Um, and we're really excited to talk to you about some of the recent developments um, and exciting advancements in the area of cardiac MRI. All right, so I think the first thing that we should probably talk about and define is sort of what is cardiac MR and sort of what does it show? Yeah, so um, obviously cardiac MRI is uh, a very advanced, advanced imaging uh, modality that we use in patients where um, the specific questions are not answered, uh, that cannot be answered by echo alone. Um, and so I, and the, here at the Cleveland Clinic, we've been doing cardiac MRI for, I don't know, 20, 30 years now. Um, and we're really excited because there's been a lot of advancement in this area particularly um, now that machine learning and artificial intelligence is becoming much more mature. And we're so excited that Chris Wen was rec recently recruited to really bring these new techniques and technology here to the clinic so that we can start directly applying it to our patients and start to do um, really exciting clinical translational research. So um, Chris, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about your role and what uh, what you will be starting here at the Cleveland Clinic. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think for the longest time, uh, the focus on a lot of the research, uh, the wonderful research here at Cleveland Clinic has been about clinical trials. We're moving into a new era where we'd like to do sort of first in man studies. And I think that's very exciting where we can develop new technologies with the patient in mind. And I think that the key thing here is that MR cardiac MRI is one of those technologies that we can either see new types of uh, tissue characterization, so fibrosis or inflammation. So, in so going away from sort of these qualitative statements of hypo-intense or hyper-intense and going into saying, oh, this is how much percent fibrosis you have, or potentially even more, this is you, ha you have for sure amyloid or this type of subtype of a disease. I think those are super important and very informative for clinicians as they, especially for, let's say, for example, non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, mm -hmm. I think that's a fantastic uh, sort of uh, uh, opportunity. And at the clinic with sort of this new technology of, as, I, as Debbie said before, artificial intelligence with AI and machine learning, as well as some of these new ter tissue characterization techniques, we're able to sort of hopefully suss that out and have a huge potential to do that. And, you know, HVT has made a huge um, investment to bring myself and my team over and to be able to be on campus with the doctors side by side to solve this, to, to really bring uh, a brand new uh, you know, avenue of, uh, of research that uh, to support and enhance what has been done here before and continue on with the, 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 the legacy of Cleveland Clinic in that regard. So. Yeah, yeah. So we're super excited because the Cleveland Clinic has been so strong in all of its innovation um, and device development and surgery and all types of procedures. And we really feel that imaging really can provide uh, a great uh, augmented foundation for that. And um, in some of our more bread and butter cases of patients with valvular heart disease, I think cardiac MR can really help us to identify patients in terms of who are asymptomatic, for instance, um, having, having some early signs of remodeling, which are the patients that are gonna be highest risk um, and should go for surgery early. Or as Chris mentioned, non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, there's a lot of patients that come and they have symptoms and we know their ejection fraction has dropped, but we don't know why right. and we don't know what's the best treatment for them. And we know that there's some patients that really respond robustly to guideline-directed medical therapy or CRT implantation, but then there's others that don't get better and in fact get worse. And how can we identify those patients and maybe personalize our treatment plans for them so that we can see that their time to the right treatment can be shortened and that their outcomes can ultimately improve. And I think we as clinicians are often somewhat um, not sure because it's somewhat of a vague a diagnosis that we sometimes give patients, particularly in the cardiomyopathy realm. And I think that's where uh, cardiac MR has a real opportunity right. to further characterize these patients so that we can provide better treatment for them. Absolutely. And I think the fact that, and we want to stress this more, that cardiac MR is data rich. And that's where we hope in the potential that being able to analyze all of this increased amount of data per patient is to get the answers that we want and to meet the unmet clinical needs that providers are asking for. Um, another area that I think is very interesting to talk about is because of the large volume, it allows us to get into the big data realm and then be able to hook up to other types of data types. 
this is where I think cardiac MR has the largest strength because you can think of it as sort of a to total phenotyping of the mm -hmm. patient's heart. And so you can also connect this to genomics or other types of uh, uh, data that we acquire on, on, on the patient that would come in. And so I think it really brings a new avenue for us to be able to infer uh, beyond just a, a simple diagnosis. It could be about how, you know, how well a patient could be down the road and to sort of you know, personalize into the future in some ways. And, 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 the, and the reason why we have that is because we already have a lot of the answers. So much of the patients and experience we will leverage, you know, looking through electronic medical records, looking at previous cardiac MRI scans, all of those uh, will be hints to how we can sort of diagnose that patient at that moment and uh, to really uh, be very much personalized in our approach and sort of understanding that. Um, I guess one question I have a little bit more would be, you know, is it really worth it all to do all of this? Because it is, it is not easy to do and echo is so easy. You know, what, what makes it worth it for us at, for, to do in cardiac MRI? The machine's loud. Sometimes patients don't want to get into the machine. Uh, you know, how do we, how do we sort of, you know, meet that, meet that gap? Yeah, so that, yeah. So you know, I think some of the things that we're really excited about developing here at the Cleveland Clinic, um, really through uh, Chris's amazing expertise uh, and technical ability, is to really um, increase the ability for more patients to get cardiac MR. So right now, it's a very underutilized resource, and it's um, only available in very um, foc focused areas of tertiary care hospitals that have very dedicated expertise for very dedicated cardiac MRI techs and very dedicated uh, cardiac MRI readers or cardiologists or radiologists. And so that access to that kind of expertise is very limited. Um, and we as physicians obviously want all patients to have access to that amazing type of resource. And so one of the things that I think is really important for we in the cardiac MR field is to improve the accessibility of cardiac MR, to make it more um, able to be done on any MR scanner, maybe by any cardiac MR, or a, any MRI tech to be able to acquire these images, and to make the interpretability of the cardiac MR easier so that you don't have to have 10 years of training to be able to interpret right. a cardiac MR. So that again, our patients can have access to this amazing resource. And maybe uh, Chris, you can tell a little bit more about what you hope to be able to do to achieve that goal. Right, yeah. So I think this idea of democratizing cardiac MR is a very key point and, and for providers to understand that things are going to change soon, all right? The complexity that we just sort of hinted at and people have known, oh, with MR being so long, et cetera. Well, the idea is to shorten scans, make it easier for the patient to come in in terms of free breathing acquisitions and to deal with arrhythmia in a lot of those cases or device implants. We're working on that actively to remove some of these artifacts. The key is to sort of allow cardiac MR to be used on anyone and, the, and then on the, on the back end of it, also to give very robust ways of doing measurements. Some of the work that uh, Debbie has done with her team and others like David Chen and et cetera, has been to see how we can infer a, a diagnosis or to be even hook it up with other types of data types in a matter of seconds. I mean, it's, it's amazing and what we have gone to and, and take things that take hours before and as, as I agree, Debbie's saying, years of experience or decades of experience now can be leveraged and, and be used at any given sort of patient. And so the future is bright in this regard. Our hope is to really tighten up protocols, make it hopefully as easy as maybe a CT or an echo. And that way you have best of both worlds, the data rich tissue characterization, all these fantastic ways of sort of answering the questions you want to answer, while at the same time be easy and accessible and, and not to be scary to, to, to uh, refer your patient for a cardiac MRI at the clinic. And uh, we have big plans to expand to other uh, sites uh, regionally and then eventually even more to the other hospitals, because once it sort of becomes what we hope to be sort of automatic in a lot of ways, then it means that anyone can do it in the, in the Cleveland Clinic sort of network. And I think that's sort of key and, um, and wonderful so that uh, someone that scans in Florida would be the same as you scan in the main campus, or as I call the mothership here, <laughs> and uh, be able to get the expertise that you can at, at, at your local Cleveland Clinic uh, hub, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, I think maybe the final thing I wanted to ask you, Debbie, is that um, Maybe you can talk a little bit about our team of teams, sort of uh, what makes it so unique, our collaboration and per, per, potentially more about for the provider as well mm -hmm. and so they can understand. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I think 
We are really uh, fortunate and blessed to be able to work at the Cleveland Clinic. It's a tremendous enterprise, but I think one of the things that I love the most about the Cleveland Clinic is that it's truly a teams of teams type of atmosphere where everybody is working towards the common goal of wanting to heal disease for our patients. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the unique things about um, cardiac MR and, jet, and specifically is that it kind of spans two institutes. It's in the Heart and Vascular Institute in terms of our patients being referred there uh, for cardiac MR. And then half of our cardiac MR readers are cardiologists. Um, but actually our cardiac MR scanners are housed under the Imaging Institute and half of our readers are also radiologists. Right. Um, and we have such a synergistic um, relationship here where we can leverage the very important expertise of both uh, uh, radiology and um, cardiology. Um, and then now with Chris being here, having also leveraging the expertise of the technical development, the engineering behind all of it. Okay. Um, and then we recently also um, have the uh, amazing um, opportunity to work with David Chen, who's a data scientist who can help gather all of the data together, not only the imaging data, but the EMR data to really help us understand how best to leverage all of these data points, again, for the common goal of helping our patients and improving our uh, therapeutic management and also understanding how disease evolves and how it responds to certain therapeutic treatments. So it's really exciting that now we have a, um, a real team of teams approach to trying to um, really address using all of these technologies to the best of our ability. Absolutely. And this sort of a final thought also is that the this this teams of teams of an investment is that furthermore, we've actually are going to be getting brand new scanners, clinical scanners, and an additional research scanner specifically in the effort of this to be able to test and validate a lot of our new techniques. So rest assured, there will be a very rigorous amount of data to describe what we are trying to do as being new and be able to be useful. And then I guess the last thing is to point out is that, um, you know, this is a, a very much a team effort. There is not just the two of us here. There are many, many people I've brought over uh, about 10 or so and hope to recruit another 10 or so. And Debbie has a very large team as well. And, and all the clinicians and readers, uh, both radiologists and cardiologists, this is a very huge amount of people working all for the singular goal to provide a cardiac MRI to sort of providers or those that are sort of referring out to us. And I think um, that is so such a Cleveland Clinic thing. I actually really, that's why I really, why I came here. It's a, it's a wonderful uh, for that. So, so thank you, yeah. Thank you so much for your time.